Don't you just love this time of year? It's such a great opportunity to enjoy the crisp, cool air, to celebrate the changing colors, and also to embrace our inner witchy self. To help you do that, Lightshine Academy has created the Halloween Witchcraft Workshop, also called The Witch Shop. If you're interested in crafting and casting spells, if you want to know how to work with the wheel of the year and the power of nature energy, this program is for you. Join us Halloween weekend, October 30th and 31st for a fun, immersive and magical workshop. Hello and welcome to today's video. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I am so excited to be here. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In today's video, we're going to be doing a three card oracle card reading using my favorite deck called Sacred Symbols by Marcella Kroll. This is an older version of this deck. I know she has released one or two more versions since then. I don't have those decks. I love this deck and I use it often. And this is what we're going to be using today. I also want to tell you that I do, I'm going to be including timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip ahead to choosing a card or skip ahead to the reveal of a card, you can go ahead and check out the timestamps in order to do so. But essentially we do these, we do these Oracle card readings from time to time so that you can receive a spirit message. You know, spirit is always talking to us. Spirit always wants to give us energy and blessings and information and knowledge that will help us to progress and to connect more profoundly to creator and profoundly to our higher self and to our purpose. And it does this in a variety of ways, but one of the ways that it can do it is through something like an Oracle card reading, which is why I like to do these for myself. And I also like to do them for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up three cards and what you're going to do is pick one. Now I want you, instead of just automatically picking one and not really thinking about it, I really do want you to be present with each card as I show them to you because you will feel some kind of an attraction or a magnetic pull or a tug or resonance with a certain card. That's what you want to be looking for. When you feel that tug, when I'm holding up a card, trust it. That's your card. I can't select the card for you. Only you can do that. Are you ready to select? All right, let's get into it. Starting with card number one. Card number one. Moving on to card number two, card number two, and from there we go to card number three, card number three. One of these cards contains a message for you. Let's go through them quickly again, shall we? Card number one, is this your card? Card number two or card number three. Now I wanna tell you sometimes when I pull cards, all it is is just blessings and luck and fortune and all of those things all day long. But today we're going a little deeper. <laughs> Spirit really does have kind of some big messages around these cards. So what I want you to do before I show you each card is drop down into the comments, please, and tell me which card you've selected. Now, I want to do this before the reveal because this is a trust exercise. This is you saying, yep, that's what I felt. I felt it for card number one, or I felt it for card number three, and I'm going to claim that message even before I see it because it's mine. You know, as humans, we have um, a tendency to switch it up after we get all the details. And so sometimes we'll see a card that we like better than the one we selected. And so we'll change our answer. Well, we don't want to do that. We want the message that's meant for us. So drop down into the comments and let me know which card you are selecting. And once we've done that, it's time for the reveal, starting with card number one. How many of you chose this card? You chose a big card. 
<laughs> you chose a card with a lot of karma, a lot of karma. And I really, this card actually flew out of the deck. And I know it's for at least one of you, but probably quite a bit of you. This is the death card, the death card. Now, of course, a lot of you might say, oh my God, death. I don't want death. It's, it's not what you think. The death card is actually a really good card and it signifies change. Now, see, if you're like me, and I'm, I'm just a quintessential Taurus. I don't like change. I like to be comfortable. I like to build what I want and then just sit around in it. I don't want to have to move, change, adapt, or modify. And so spirit especially challenges me all the time to evolve. And we have to evolve in order to continue to expand our consciousness and to move in the direction of our purpose. And so right now in your life, you are being called out of a situation, called out of a condition or an experience because there is a new one waiting for you. And it feels to me like this is a long time coming for some of you. Like this is a situation you found yourself in for quite some time and you're ready for this change. You might be a little um, anxious. You might be a little nervous about what's going to happen on the other side of it, but spirit says it's good and you want to trust it. You see, the nature of energy, divine energy, is to move. It is to flow and it is also to create. Create requires change. And so you're moving into a really exciting time of creation in your life, but it does require that you slough off the old first and you have to be willing to do that, don't you? You have to be willing to slough it off. You have to be willing to let go. And that often requires bravery and courage on our part. So again, you're in kind of a karmic cycle right now where you want to examine what's happening in your life and you want to take your own inventory as to what no longer serves. Because when we release what no longer serves, we open up an entire illumined landscape of what is possible for us in this life. Now's the time, my friend. Now's the time. Big card. All right. Moving on now to card number two. How many of you selected card number two? Well, if that's you, you also selected a, a deeply profound card, which is the shadow card. Also not a bad card, but you know, I see shadow and I think shadow work. And I think, oh, here I go again, back into process, back into refinement, back into my stuff. And by the time you're my age, there's a lot of stuff, isn't there? What this card is asking you to do is to please observe the way you are reacting and the way you are behaving in circumstances, especially your default reactions and your default triggers, like what, what you automatically go to. That is a clue for you. When you're reacting, especially if it's a negative type of a reaction to something, it's always an invitation for you to examine something that exists inside of yourself so you wouldn't care so much if it wasn't, if there wasn't a resonance or a co correspondence within you. And anytime we react and anytime we become conscious to the shadow and that which animates us in the present moment, it's always a good thing. Now, the reason we have to be with the shadow and we can't pretend the shadow doesn't exist is because by healing the shadow, we make way for the illumination. We make way for the light, which is just another way to say we make way for the energy, the divine, for truly for God and for the higher self. But God needs space to exist inside of you, doesn't God? And if you're so filled with your stuff and your patterns and your beliefs and your pain and your stories and your labels and your shadow, then there's really nowhere for spirit to occupy. And so the only reason we are called to do shadow work is because we are being called to do purpose work. We are being called to up level. In order to up level, reach that new grid of consciousness, you've got to clear some stuff, not unlike death here. How many of you out there felt a pull to both of these? <laughs> that might be because they both kind of apply. But for you, it's about watching and honoring what your pro what, what your behaviors are, because that's the map. What's showing up on your screen of life, as Neville Goddard and Napoleon Hill often talked about, is an indication of the map of your subconscious and the map of your inner world. And if you don't like what's showing up out there, and if you get triggered by it, and if you're upset by it, 
It's because there's a correspondence inside of you that needs to be, that's begging for you to look at it so that you can up level. Now is the time. Don't be afraid of the shadow work. It's always, always, always an invitation and an opportunity. Woo. Two big cards. Amen. Two big cards. Are you ready for the last one? The last one actually comes with a cover card. <laughs> the last one actually comes with another supplemental message. And this one, this card number three is boundaries. Boundaries. Boundaries are good for other people so that they can understand who you are and how you operate. But boundaries are especially good for you. And too many of us don't enforce healthy boundaries. We don't, well, we don't create them in the first place. We don't tell the people in our life who routinely put us down or who re routinely upset us or who take advantage of us. We don't tell them, hey, you can't do that. And I mean it. Get out. We, we don't do that because we're too shy. We don't know how to. Some of these people are our parents. Some of these people are our children. And they take advantage of us and they make our life more difficult. This card means that there's an area in your life right now, and it can be people, but it can also be work. It can also be work and it can also be behaviors and habits in you around which you need some boundaries. No, Crystal, you don't get to go and have a bottle of wine at 10 o'clock at night with a whole gallon of ice cream. Boundaries. The body needs some boundaries from you. Where are where is the need for boundaries in your life? Boundaries feel good. They can be difficult to put into place and also difficult to enforce, but they are so good for you. Now, the card that came with this is the Kirpan card. Let me show you that. And essentially, for me, this means cord cutting, cord cutting. Maybe the reason you let people stomp all over you is because they've attached themselves to your energy and to your field through the Akka cords. These are like tentacles that express out from them and hook into you. And you can't help but feel their judgment of you. You can't help but feel their opinion of you. You can't help but feel how they feel about you because that information is traveling the cords. In order for you to create healthy boundaries and enforce healthy boundaries, you need to have a practice of energetic management and maintenance cutting those cords every single day so they don't have access to your energy. When people don't have access to your energy, so they're not constantly sucking your energy or they're not sending you little detonations throughout the day through the cords, when they can't do that, you feel much stronger, much more grounded, and much more whole. Thereby, it's easier <laughs> to make boundaries for yourself that complement you. Listen, if you're not going to protect your path and your purpose and your life and your peace, who will? It's got to be you. And this is how you do it. Again, whew, three cards that were pretty heavy, but these feel like wake up cards. Like, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Do the things you need to do. Come on, guys. There's so much potential and so much possibility waiting for you, but you got to do the things you got to do to get there. And so let's do it together. That's what life is about. Life is about process. Life is about doing the things. And yes, life is also about doing the hard things. But guess what? What happens when you do the hard thing? You demonstrate to yourself that you're the kind of chick, you're the kind of dude who can do hard things. So the next time a hard thing rolls down the pipeline in your life, you've already proven to yourself that you can do it. You know how to take care of it and there will be no problem whatsoever. You can do hard things. You can do all things through spirit, through God who strengthens you. All right, everybody. That's our messages for today. Kind of heavy, but I like it. Give it to me, God. I'm into it. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and until next time never forget that i have got nothing but love for you bye guys the light shine development circle is a sacred place for spiritual seekers to practice giving and receiving readings the circle is open to all psychics oracle card readers mediums channels energy healers akashic records readers and any other type of spiritual practitioner who offers their service via a reading style format. 
If you're ready to awaken your gifts and talents and fine-tune your intuitive abilities, we'd love to have you in the circle.